Welcome everyone. Welcome to the Holder Construction subcontracting event for the Tarleton Fort Worth building number two. Today's event is hosted by the statewide hub program and the DIR hub program. We're gonna give it just another minute or two to let the last minute, um, to let everyone try and get in. So if you'll just hang on just a second, we'll start in a couple minutes. If I can remind our panelists, if you are not speaking, please put yourselves on mute. Um, our panel, our attendees will be muted uh, and so they can submit any questions on the question and answer box. Okay, I think we've got enough um, to get going. Desiree, if you want to begin with housekeeping. Sure. Good morning again, everyone, and welcome to the Hub Talk Holder Construction, Tarleton Fort Worth Building Number Two. My name is Desiree Brown. I'm with the Texas Department of Information and Resources, and I'll be your moderator today. If you can see my screen and hear me, please raise your hand. Great. Thank you. Just as a reminder, this session will be recorded. And the chat has been disabled for attendees. If you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A se section. With that, I'll turn you into the hands of Maya Ingram, who is the statewide hub program manager with the Texas Comptroller of Public Accounts. Maya. Thank you, Desiree. You're welcome. Again, everyone, thank you for um, joining us today. We're working to uh, increase our hub participation in this uh, Texas A&M system event for the Fort Worth building construction, building number two. Um, if anyone is attending that is not hub certified, please contact the statewide hub office or go to our webpage to enter your certification application through the new online certification system. I am Maya Ingram. I'm the statewide hub program manager. And the Lynn Hottie is a co-host with me today. She's the director of hub program outreach and training at the Texas Department of Information Resources. Next slide, please. The Comptroller of Public Accounts administers the statewide historically underutilized business program. The hub program, as we refer to, is the state small business advocate. We certify the small businesses who are small, women, minority, and service disabled veteran owned businesses and certify them as hubs to encourage them to participate in the state's procurement process. Next slide. Our centralized master bidders link is listed here. That's a $70 annual fee. The CMBL is considered the state's official vendor list. This is the list that state purchasers and hub coordinators will use to notify vendors wanting to do business with the state of Texas. And this is also the list they will go to to find any small businesses that are listed in the hub directory. Our statewide hub certification is a free certification. It's a four-year certification. And for more information on qualifications and requirements, the link is provided above. You can call the statewide hub program at 888-863-5881. Or you can send us an email at statewide hub program at cpatexas.gov. Next slide.
So with this, I'm gonna turn it over to Keith Williams, the hub coordinator at the Texas A&M University System. Keith? Good morning, everyone. My name is Keith Williams. I'm the hub coordinator for Texas A&M University System. And I wanna thank everyone uh, attending this event for the Tarleton State University, Fort Worth building number two um, with Holder Construction, Conreal, and of course, Tarleton State and A&M System. Uh, Texas A&M System is committed to providing equal access and opportunity that encourages the development of businesses in the state of Texas. So our chief executive officers for A&M System Universities, Agencies and Health Science Center are dedicated to providing equal opportunity. Um, it's our commitment to serve the state's Asian Pacific American, Black American, Hispanic American, Native American, American woman, and or service disabled veteran businesses through the historically underutilized business program. That is the hub program, which Maya just uh, talked about. Um, so with Texas A&M University system, we have 11 universities, eight state agencies, and a comprehensive health science center. Uh, this building here is located in uh, south of Fort Worth in Crowley. Uh, this is the building number two. We have one building existing that was done by Holder Construction, which is a beautiful building. And this building number two will be just uh, exciting and unbelievable that everyone wants to be a part of this project. How about that? And especially, you know, as as AM system uh, is creeping into the DFW uh, area. So just be on the lookout. We're, we're here to help you. Um, again, the hub certificate is free. Uh, so please look into that. You know, you can always go to the state wide uh, historically underutilized business program uh, and their number is 888-863-5881. Uh, and again, I'm Keith Williams with Texas A&M University System Hub Coordinator. And I'll pass this along to Miss Gina. Justin, how about that? Hi, uh, my name is Gina. Uh, I'm here representing Conreal, and Conreal is a minority owned and operated um, general construction company um, based in the Arlington area. And so we complete and work all over the nation, though. And um, this is unique for us as well. Um, we were approached by Texas A&M systems with um, them being very committed to the goal of MWBE participation and having um, the highest numbers that they uh, did the, the highest numbers and goals that they are very committed to um, achieving we were bought on as almost like a sub consultant to um, give different or unconventional ways to help increase minority participation and just um, I guess almost exhaust the efforts of just making people aware and um, being another resource to the MWBE firms in the area. So um, we are very excited to start this relationship with Texas A&M and Holder. And um, we are also working seamlessly with Holder to help um, all throughout all phases of construction, pre-construction um, design, and then also all through construction as well, the bidding process. So um, we're very excited. We know that we're definitely going to reach our um, MWBE goals and almost uh, set the bar moving forward. So we're very, very excited. And um, working with Keith and Gina has been really, really fun. Um, and like I said, we're one team all committed to the same goal of um, encouraging um, MWBE participation and hitting and surpassing goals. So. I'll pass it over to the other Gina. Good morning, everybody. I'm Gina Heston. Um, it's an honor to be here and speak with all of you. Or um, I'll, I'll echo my counterparts, Keith and Gina. We're, we're very excited and thrilled to be a part of this project. Um, I'm a senior pre-construction manager with Holder. Um, you know, working hand with hand with um, Keith and the and the hub team with Texas A&M and Conreal. Um, this is going to be the, the second building on the Tarleton's Fort Worth campus, so um, a great opportunity for all of you. Um, we do have a high hub participation goal of 30%. Um, 
which we are planning to achieve. So um, it's, it's just a great opportunity to be a part of something big, be on the front end of the, of the you know, the first of many buildings on the campus that, that will become a, a staple um, here in Fort Worth. I think that's it. Can we go to the, the next slide? All right. Um, so I'll give you guys a little bit of background on the project. As I mentioned before, second building on the campus. Um, the building itself, um, you know, is uh, about a little over 100,000 square feet um, concrete cast in place structure um, with a brick, uh, limestone, metal panel, curtain wall, facade. Um, the picture you see on the screen here is actually a, a picture of the first building, but the second building um, obviously is still under design right now, um, but, but we'll have the same look and feel um, as this project. Um, the building itself will contain um, lecture halls, uh, classrooms, offices, and a lot of very specific lab space. Um, so we're excited about that. It's going to be um, a good space for folks in the nursing program, kinesiology, physical therapy, um, food service, all of those kinds of things. Um, we'll have a home in, in the new uh, building number two. Um, I think that's it. We'll go into some more specifics of the trade packages um, a little bit later on, um, but I will let Keith talk to you a little bit about the location of this project specifically on the next slide. So as you guys can see, well, I've got a little Google map inside of the uh, planned uh, Fort Worth campus there. There's building number one, uh, building number two is uh, on the screen there. But as, as you can see, we're, we're located just south of Fort Worth um, and, excuse me, west of Dallas. So we're, we're real convenient. We're, we're not uh, Tarleton State in Stephenville. We are Tarleton State in uh, Fort Worth. So it's a, you know, I, I would say it's an easy drive. I, I, I currently live in Houston and, you know, within Houston, you're still within an hour drive of anywhere. But uh, usually you're, you know, less than 30 minutes from uh, Fort Worth and, you know, less than 45 minutes to an hour from Dallas. So, you know, we, we want to encourage everyone out there that, you know, it, it's literally right down the street. So these opportunities, um, they're going to be available and, and we want to have, you know, as much hub participation as possible for this project. Uh, we can go to the next slide. And we'll, I'll hand it back over to Gina. Okay, perfect. Um, so for right now, the project is, you know, Tarleton State University, Fort Worth, building number two. I'm sure that will not always be the name, but that's what we're calling it for now. Um, as I mentioned before, a lot of different types of spaces um, within the building, classrooms, labs, um, a large tiered lecture hall and some really unique finishes, uh, some beautiful metal ceilings, wood ceilings, um, tile details, a lot of limestone and beautiful curtain wall um, and, and other, um, you know, pretty complex skin systems. Um, we are absolutely looking at all of the opportunities um, that we can to, to make participation in the project available to every hub contractor. So um, we are looking at creative solutions in terms of scope packaging and things like that. Um, so I would encourage everybody to submit a pre-qualification um, submission on our website um, as soon as possible so we can gauge your interest, reach out to us, and figure out what the right uh, level of participation for you and your firm is. Um, the project schedule currently, uh, we are accepting pre-qualifications. Um, as I mentioned before, just because you are a small company or you know maybe haven't done a job of this scale before, doesn't mean that your participation would not be accepted. We would just work at um, pairing you with with perhaps a prime or um, parceling out the, the scope packages to to make them right sized for for the firms that we want to have involved. Um, but pre qualifications are being accepted now through 831. Um, we'll we'll probably accept them after that. Um, it's just 
the procurement start uh, will be on 913. That's when we're getting the uh, set of documents that we will submit a GMP off of. So we want to have a good plan um, by the time we get those documents of who we're going to reach out to, good timeline, um, you know, and make sure we can spend the right level of time and attention with the hub contractors who are, are interested at that stage of the game. Um, the construction start is going to be in Q1 of uh, 2022, and we've got a 21 month schedule ahead of us. So um, likely we'll start, the building would be open formally um, in the fall of 2024. You go to the next slide, please. Perfect. Um, so as I mentioned before, these are the main scope packages, but it's not limited to just these. Um, these are just some of the larger components that are going to be part of the project. So uh, we'll obviously work together to right size um, all of those things. I've been working with Gina and the Conrail team to really um, talk about what the right level of packaging is and pairing and all of those things. So. The, the sooner we can get the pre-qualifications and everything vetted, um, you know, the sooner we can kind of come up with that plan and make sure that we create the right opportunities for folks. Um, Gina, do you have anything to add here in terms of the scope packages or how we're going to do the, the package? No, I think uh, you did a great job of explaining it, um, but just reiterating that, you know, it is important to get pre-qualifications in because we are going to look at some um, unique type of solutions. And so just seeing what we have as far as things to our side of resources, um, what we have to work with, it would be great. It would help us um, build our strategies to make sure we can maximize the MWB participation numbers. So um, no, I, I think you did a great job of covering it. Okay, perfect. And as you can see here, you know, this, the buildings are awesome, um, really beautiful, nice finishes, really a great place for um, students to come in and, and learn and, um, you know, further their education with Tarleton. If you can go to the next slide, please. Okay, so requirements to partner. Um, first and foremost, as we mentioned, pre-qualify. Um, we've tried to um, simplify our pre-qualification form as much as possible and not make it too cumbersome or you need to have your accountant present and all of those things. So really what we need to know is what type of firm you are, um, the number of employees, your experience modification rate, um, that would be your, your safety rating. Um, what scopes of work you're interested in doing um, which, and which of those are self-performed versus which are subcontracted, um, any licenses that you have, um, your hub certification, um, annual billing, typical project size um, pro with other project experience that could be relevant, and then um, you know bonding and insurance uh, capabilities. So, Again, none of those things um, should bar you from submitting a pre-qualification. We'll just see, you know, what that information is and, and find the right solution for you to participate in the project. And ultimately, you know, once you fill out fill that information out for Tarleton, you know, we'll, you'll be in our database, right? You'll be um, in Conrail's database as well. So we want to build relationships with, with you. We don't want this to be a one and done. You know, we love to, to meet new subcontractors. Um, I think Conrail and Holder are in DFW to stay. Um, so if we can and build relationships with as many as you as possible, build trust, um, make you successful on the project, ultimately your success is our success. So we're very invested in that. Um, you know, we'd love to get you involved in, in other projects in the future. So um, I think it's a great opportunity now to, to be a part of the Tarleton job, but also to, to get to know us so we can get to know you better and, and hopefully uh, form some lasting relationships for, for future projects. If you go to the next slide, please. Okay, so what to expect during the bidding process. We talked about pre-qualification, so that, that's kind of what's going on now. Once we get the drawings, we will be sent um, you know, an email saying if you've qualified as a prime or a subprime and, and what that means. 
um, you know, we'll either share the information for the primes with you or, you know, work through um, splitting up some packages, but you'll be issued an RFP. That's a request for proposal that will have all of the instructions um, to the bidders and what to expect in terms of, you know, what we're expecting in the bid submission, timing, all of those kinds of things. Um, I have a team of trade responsible engineers. So one person assigned to each trade will be your main point of contact during the bidding process. They will create what's called an exhibit one scope of work. So you'll obviously have the drawings, you'll have the specs, you'll have the RFP, um, and then you'll also have a very detailed scope of work to make sure that you're bidding a full and complete scope and um, things on our side are very well coordinated. You know, things are not double covered, no scope gaps, all those kinds of things. So if it's on the exhibit one scope of work, that's a piece of scope that we would want you to include in the pricing that you submit as part of your bid. Um, after we receive all of the bids, we'll look at them, we'll put them into, you know, an evaluation and determine, you know, based on the um, criteria that we've agreed upon with uh, the Texas A&M system, uh, we will figure out who makes sense to have scope meetings with, um, shortlist, um, and, and go from there. The scope meetings would be with um, the owner, the architect, Holder, Conreal, um, to make sure that we're all aligned in terms of what the scope of work is, site logistics, schedule, all of those things. The more we can get figured out up front, the more successful we will all be once the work starts in the field. Um, after we go through that, um, you know, we will we will create a formal evaluation and uh, weigh each subcontractor's bid. So it's not going to be just based on price. It will be based on hub participation. It will be based on um, safety, overall plan, quality, um, and a number of other things. So just make sure, you know, you're, when you submit your bid, you've thought through the project, you're ready to talk to it, um, and you've got a good plan of, of how you're going to, to safely build the job. Um, once we submit that evaluation over to Texas A&M, um, you know, we will wait for approval um, of the overall GMP, which we're expecting in, in February of um, 2022. And as soon as we receive that, uh, we'll make formal awards and um, get the process started um, to start construction. So I, I obviously just said a lot there. <laughs> um, if you have questions about that, um, please let me know, or you can wait for the Q&A um, at the end. But that's typically how that um, that process will work. Um, Gina, do you have anything else to add there? No, no, um, no, you did a great job. Okay, all right. Um, if you could go to the next slide, we can talk about what some of our future events are. Right, so one thing we wanna make sure that we're doing is um, providing ample opportunities um, to uh, highlight what the requirements are just so we can cast the widest net as possible. Um, just so we can have the best, you know, we're, we're building a Rolodex as we're doing this. So even if things don't work out for this job, um, it is great, like uh, Gina said, to get your name in with Holder and Conreal, not just for this opportunity, but for more to come in the future. So um, that's very important to us. And we want to make sure that we're capturing that as best as we can. So um, we're definitely utilizing um, different uh, events and opportunities to um, cast that wide net and make a snapshot of the opportunities or resources we have in the area. So that being said, um, we have about two events a month. We've had previous events prior to this event, um, but mo moving forward, we have different events. Um, so we've had the um, informational pre-bid meeting with the Regional Black Contractors Association. Um, we're doing this today on the 14th, the Hub virtual event. Um, in August, we have two different events as well. We have the Build Up Fort Worth Expo, um, which is um, obviously out in Fort Worth, but you know, kind of where you can actually talk to Conrail Holder and A and M um, as we can answer any questions. You can come up to the booth and talk to us, and then we'll also be doing another virtual regional um, Hispanic Contractors event. 
as an informational event just to let individuals know about the project, the timeline, and what they can expect. And I know we've also had conversations about potentially doing a town hall type meeting at the um, other Tarleton building, the building number one, just so people can see what it looks like in person and um, Holder and Conroe representatives would be there to answer questions, um, form that first initial step in building that relationship. Um, that's what we would do there. So um, I know we're still in the very preliminary stages um, talking about when we would have that event, but um, we'll definitely provide that information as it becomes available. But um, it's very important to us to provide multiple opportunities that we can create those um, touches to build a relationship. And even though these are relationships or events that are outlined, you know, as always, I know um, I speak for Conrail and G Gina speaks for Holder. You know, if you ever have a question or um, need, you know, more cl clarification on what we're presenting, you can always reach out to us, um, even if it isn't during the time of one of these events. So um, yeah, those are just some of the events that we have and we're excited to potentially see you guys there. We can go on to the next slide. All right, so um, the gentleman you see on the screen is Trevor Carey. Um, he works with me over here at Holder, and he's going to be the main um, point of contact for any questions on pre-qualifications um, or uh, just general questions about bidding. Um, I'll let you take a screenshot of his information here. Um, we can also... Um, you know, send it out after this meeting. But Trevor's going to be sort of the, the gatekeeper of all things hub pre-qualification uh, Tarleton. So um, great guy, very plugged into the project. Um, he should be able to help with, with any questions that you might have. Um, so with that, I think that that is the end of our presentation. Um, if anyone has any questions about the project bidding, uh, help specific items, um, let us know. So this is Maya Ingram and uh, someone asked if we would have the presentation available to them. We can make this presentation available. Uh, I believe we can post a link to, uh, Tracy, can we post a link to this on the um, question and answers or something to, me make available. Uh, we can also send it to all attendees and we will send a link. This will eventually be put on the hub events page. Uh, so there will be a link there so we can share that with everyone as well. Perfect. Um, I also see on the Q&A here, um, someone asked the pre-qualification website address. So we just um, showed that in the previous slide. So maybe we can put that up in a moment. Um, but you, you, if we send out the presentation, it would be there as well. Um, the architect on the project is Perkins and Will. Um, they're, they're a great partner. They actually um, did the project with, with us at Holder, um, the, first, the first building there that you've seen pictures of. And the um, building uh, construction budget is 48.5 million. So working hard right now to, um, to get that within budget, um, we are um, in the process of, of pricing the, um, the DD drawings. So working hard to keep it in budget so it's good and, um, and tight and ready to go out to bid in September. So those are the only questions I see. Are there any um, additional questions? Okay, well, as always, you know, if you have other items, um, reach out to Trevor um, and he can, he can help you guys out. But again, we're very, very excited about the job, um, excited to get to know more of you um, and to have uh, another successful project on our about with the, the Texas A&M and, and uh, hub system. Thank you very much. Um, Again, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, if you have any questions, you can reach us at the Statewide Hub Program, uh, or you can reach out to uh, the holder um, presenters and contacts that they provided.
So is there anything else, Keith or Holder? No, I, I just want to thank everyone for attending today. And we're, we're going to make this a successful project and for, for years to come. So I, I just want to thank uh, my partners, uh, Holder Construction and Conrail, and of course, Charleston State University and A&M System. Thank you very much. We'll do all that we can to help the hub participation keep growing. Thank you everyone for attending today. Thanks so much for having us. We appreciate it. Goodbye. Bye.